What's up, everybody? Um, don't remember what episode this is going to be. I think it's going to be episode eight. Uh, we're going to talk about ceramic coating application, uh, how I do it, how I can make it a lot easier for you guys. Also, removal of the coating, and then a good way to check to make sure that you've removed the coating properly. So, we're going to be using some IGL quartz here. Microfiber sponge. You get your pre-coat. This is a post, or sorry, pre-panel wipe before ceramic coating. <sighs> okay, so we have our microfiber applicator, our ceramic coating, and our panel. So before you do any kind of application of the ceramic coating, you should always pre-wipe pre-coat the panel, make sure you remove any oils or polishing material off of the panel that could impede the bonding or the, uh, the solvent flash off, if you will, uh, of the product. Now there's a few videos that show people using the foam blocks and the suede applicators and those work great but I feel like you waste a lot of product with those. With something like this you're able to spread the product out more evenly with a better um, a better uh, control of the applicator and uh, I kind of feel like these are a little bit safer than using the suede applicators so what I typically do is I, I will put three lines and then cross hatch it to kind of make like a tic-tac-toe pattern and that primes the pad especially if it's a fresh pad and then you essentially just work in straight lines and then you work perpendicular to those lines to maximize coverage so I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see the dark, dark spots from the, the lines going on. And you do, at no point in time do you need to reapply any coating to this applicator. Especially with the uh, IGL products, they go a very long way. A very, very long way. So there's like a bunch of straight tiger stripes, so we're going to go over perpendicular to those lines. And we're going to Make those tiger stripes blend. You can use a little bit of pressure. At this time, you can see dark spots or high spots is what they're referred to as. With your high spotting, the best way to do it is to go back over it until you've minimized your high spotting, which is identified by the darker lines and spots that are all over the panel. With something like this, you get really, really good coverage. So if you're using C Quartz UK, that only requires one coat, or IGL products that requires two coats, and you get maximum coverage on however many coats you're doing. The foam and suede, I feel like, takes you longer, and you don't get as much coverage in each pass, and you end up using a lot more product. I just did this entire door, which is on an SRT8 Challenger, a big door, with just three small lines, or six lines, to prime the pad and then you would need to do one or two lines just to keep the pad um, primed up. So now that you've identified you have high spots, we're just going to go back over it. It might feel slightly tacky depending on the temperature in your shop. Uh, if you have a solvent based coating um, like this one, um, you are going to have a flash time of probably around five to ten minutes at uh, anywhere between 65 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit with low humidity. When you have a high temperature with high humidity, um, your flash points will be reduced significantly. And this is going off of what I found with my coating experience. Um, you'll have a faster flash time. The other thing to remember is after you've done about three to four panels, uh, usually do about two at a time, you're going to want to rotate this. That's what's going to happen is product is going to cure on here and it's going to be, become increasingly difficult to remove the fresh coating that you've put on the vehicle because you're mixing fresh coating with semi-cured coating and it's going to be really tacky and smudgy. So it's really important to flip this over to a fresh side and continue on down the vehicle. 
Now, because this has such a long flash time, five to 10 minutes, um, I've seen it go as short as three to one minute based on temperatures and uh, of course your humidity. I don't know if barometric pressure really plays a part in this. I'm sure it does in some way, uh, like it does in anything else. But um, with a product like this that's solvent based, you really have to do test spots. So measure the, uh, the temperature of the panel with a laser uh, thermometer, or um, I have a, a thing in my shop that hangs up that measures barometric pressure, humidity, and uh, ambient temperature. Um, that gives me an idea of what the air quality is like, but then I also measure the temperature of the panel, and that's gonna give me a more accurate reading of how long I have to wait for the product to set up. Now, in order to know that it is done curing or flashing rather um, you basically just do a tap test I'll take my towel fold it in fours and if the towel grabs a tiny bit just a tiny bit especially with quartz then it's ready to come off um, if it feels like it's not even there it needs to sit for a little bit longer um, does this mean that the coating isn't bonding no it's still bonding it's just not bonding completely so you're end up you're gonna end up having a lot of streaking and smudging because you're not removing the coating entirely. Once the coating flashes off, all the all that all that remains is going to be what you see as smudging on the surface, and that should come off into your towel. But because you're not letting it sit long enough, it potentially could compromise the coating as far as longevity goes and bond, which is why the company requires two coatings just in case the first one didn't go on right, and it also layers it, makes it thicker, and obviously increases the durability of the product. So. Uh, ceramic coatings are relatively easy to put on. What makes them difficult is either getting them off, knowing what temperatures to work with them in, and also um, if you make a mistake and there is a high spot, if you're using a really high quality coating, you're going to need, need to know how to fix that. Um, and we'll cover that in another video, how to fix a high spot. Uh, we'll probably do it with Kenzo or Quartz Plus, and uh, I'll show you guys how to basically rectify that situation. Um, and it, it's not really uh, cost prohibited, but uh, it is time consuming if it's all over the car. Um, and you're going to need to know how to fix it quickly in order to maximize your profit or basically not lose any money uh, during that process or a lot of money, I should say. But that's pretty much it. This is going to sit here for probably another two, three minutes uh, and then I will uh, remove it.